It's Josh Van Leeuwen here and my beautiful wife Janae and we are going to be doing a video on a Harvest Host campground review. It's not a campground, but Harvest Host review. <laughs> So this week for Where We've Been Wednesday, um, we are going to take you from our travels from Wisconsin down through Illinois and over into Indiana. Um, so this week we took um, advantage of a new program that we recently joined called Harvest Hosts. We're going to tell you some basics about it um, and then we're going to review the locations we've stayed at so far. It's it's been awesome. Yeah, it's been really fun. Um, and excuse the sound in the back. Kids are in the back um, watching a movie. And we are not we, driving. Nope. Um, we want to start off first with uh, the price of Harvest Hosts. So we were really, really hesitant about doing it. Um, and the only reason was because uh, they kind of require you to purchase stuff at the locations. And we we're like, well. Well, let's give a few basics first. Okay. So Harvest Host Hi. is a program that you pay an annual membership to be a part of. Yeah. Um, once you are a part of the membership, you have access to locations for camping. Yes. Resume. You get to park in their parking lot. Parking lots or just on the property, basically, of the, um, the hosts that are also participating in the program. Yep, some are large, some are small um, participants. Um, but anyway, so it is $79 a year, I believe, um, and that only is for wineries, museums, farms, farms, and a couple other businesses. And if you pay, I think it's $100 a year, you can also add golf courses. So without the golf courses, we can stay at like 850 or close to 900 locations all throughout the U.S. Um, if we do the golf course one, I think it adds another 200 places, but we don't, plus. <coughs> excuse me, we don't golf. <laughs> um, and some actually do require you to play a hand of golf, but um, so we don't do that. A hand so, of golf? I don't is know, that what uh, it's called? Is it a hand of golf? Play on. <laughs> I would say a, a round of golf. A round of golf, Maybe. yeah. I think it would be playing a hand of cards. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyways. <laughs> so, um, We'll have in the link below uh, an actual code that you guys can put in if, you, if anyone is interested in doing a Harvest Host, and that'll get you 15% off. Um, and so it'll make it like $67 for the year. And it so far, it has been worth it because also, if you're not happy with it, they'll give you 100% guarantee um, and they'll give you your money back. We've done three now, and everyone we've called right away, they're like, yeah, come on by. Mm -hmm. And even one we called, and it was like, we'll be there in a couple hours. Is that okay? And they didn't have a problem. But um, Yeah, they ask you to call in advance, um, not any more than two weeks, um, but they you know, recommend around 24 hours in advance just to let the place know, hey, I'm coming through. Do you have a spot for me? Um, there might already be another Harvest Host person there. We haven't ran into that issue yet. Yeah. Um, some places will allow more than one camper. Um, it just depends. So basically you get to stay for free on the property for the people that are participating as a host. Um, there are just a few rules along with that. And one of them is that they ask that you support the business. So there's lots of ways that you could spend your $20, which is one of the main reasons why we love this program. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if you're staying at a winery, you can do a wine tasting that, say, is costs five dollars. Well, we each do a wine tasting, and right there, we've spent ten of our twenty dollars, but we got something in return. We right. got to enjoy some wine and relax for a minute. Right, and we'll buy a bottle of wine for another ten dollars or whatever else. Yeah, to ten, get fifteen us, uh, dollars, and twenty yeah. bucks. I mean, every time it's been close to twenty, but mm -hmm. you can always spend more. Orchards. Um, you know where they have produce we bought a bag of apples at one place um, almost everywhere we've gone has had baked goods of some sort mm -hmm. um, cute little gifts you know all the fun signs that everybody wants in their farmhouse decor these days right there's a lot yeah, yeah so if you don't drink wine 
or any kind of alcohol. You can still stay at a winery because yep. they have a lot of really neat decor. If we had a house, we'd be buying up <laughs> a lot of stuff for our house. We would have spent a lot of money yeah. by now. Maybe we'll continue this even when we have a house just to, you know, decorate our house. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, you're not paying for your spot, you're just contributing to the business. Um, but I mean, that's another bonus is you probably wouldn't have otherwise gone to any of these locations. Yeah, it's been nice to actually kind of um, sit down and relax mm -hmm. instead of, you know, Walmart parking lot or whatever else. Yeah. Because um, yeah. those, you're kind of on edge just because you don't know who's coming through there. These harvest hosts have actually been kind of out of the way, not not crazy out of the way. Bit, yeah. Um, but they're not in the city. Um, the, the few that we've stayed at, probably like five, ten minutes outside of a few of the cities we've been to. Yeah, maybe to. 20 for mm -hmm. one of them. But Yeah. And, we, yeah. you know, we actually chose this one, too, because there's a lot of wineries and museums over here, um, kind of on the Midwest or East Coast. There was a lot. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to really stay at a lot of Walmarts on the <laughs> East Coast. I think there's a lot more... Um, Safety is Safety important. and a lot more Walmarts too. I've noticed in Cracker Barrels and other ones don't want you to stay in their parking lot. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the west of the U.S. is very nice. And I don't know about the east, but we're heading that way. We're to about see to find what, out. You know, yeah. So, um, but anyway, part of the rules is they ask you to um, stay at their place only for 24 hours or less mm -hmm. um, so one night yeah they don't want you to ask to stay another night um according to the rules it says just if if you're offered um to stay any longer then go ahead and do it but never ask um mm -hmm. we haven't been asked to stay i don't think it's because um, of us but i think that we would have been able to at all three of well the first two one, of them the first one offered he said how long are you planning on staying yeah, I guess the other couple have actually said, um, how long are you staying? But yeah. I guess that would be, you know, their choice um, if we they also want haven't it or not. I mean, we haven't needed. We're using this as like our travel days to break up our travel days. Mm -hmm. So we're driving for a while and then we're staying at a Harvest Host location where we can get out and run around and relax for the evening. And then we're driving again the next day. Right. So it, it's been nice. Um the other thing was making sure um, they don't want you to unpack all of your stuff. Um, that way you're not, you know, it, don't get too comfortable, I guess, yeah. at these places. We have asked if it's okay if we unhook um, to go see something, you know, a few miles down the road. Mm -hmm. Or if you wanted to go to dinner. And they've all not had a problem with that. Um, you do sign a, like a waiver when you sign up for it saying, you know... These harvest host people are not liable for any damages to your car or anything else like that. Because also, we parked under some trees the other night, mm -hmm. and it was windy. And luckily, yeah. nothing fell over onto our RV. But if it did, um, we'd have to take full responsibility and not pass that on to them. So, But again, you're getting a free camp spot for the night. so Right. And instead of staying at a campsite for nothing, I mean, you pay the money just to dump and use your water... But that's it where this you're staying for free but you're getting something out of it like if we're gonna stay in a Walmart parking lot we're gonna spend money anyway we stayed at a Walmart last mm -hmm. night and I spent 50 bucks on yeah. oh yeah I need this oh yeah I need this you know where <laughs> we didn't stay in Walmart we probably didn't need any of it but right. Right. Uh, that's how it was um, another rule is you need a totally self-contained um, RV so you have to have your water, you have to have your sewer, um, and things like that. And no also, tent camping. Right. Cook top in there, because they also don't want you setting up your barbecue grill. And I'm sure a couple of the places, like, we've been far away from the business in a parking lot. Like, if we took out my black... Um, Blackstone grill. Blackstone griddle, I don't think it would have been an issue. Or even our, our camp chairs, but um, it wouldn't have been a problem. No. And no. yeah, I just guess be just respectful. Yeah, fill out, you know, each one of your locations that you choose and mm -hmm. you know, you make a decision on whether they'd like it or not and ask. They've been really, really nice. Yeah. It's been really nice to talk to these people too, the owners and stuff. So Yeah, we've met the owners at two of the three locations and um at the third one we you know got to visit with one of the locals. So it, it's been a great opportunity mm -hmm. to just um, take advantage of the area that you're in and learn and see about it. Um, 
So anyways, enough about the program. Let's talk about some of the actual places we've stayed. Yeah. Okay, so the first place we decided to try out the program with was called Harvest Orchard. And this was in Chilton, Wisconsin. Um, it would be like between Green Bay and Milwaukee, halfway between there. So middle part of the state. Um, again, it was a travel day. Uh, we just needed to break up that trip getting from Green Bay down to all the way down to Madison was where we were heading next. Um, so we just needed somewhere to stop along the way. Uh, this was perfect. This was a great mm -hmm. place. Yeah, because we wanted to get pumpkins and stuff anyway yep. for the kids so yep. we could either carve them or do whatever else. So that worked out nice because we were going to spend the money anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how we spent our $20 basically. Um, we bought a bag of apples, which at this one you get to pick them. So we actually mm -hmm. took the kids out in the orchard and let them pick their own apples from each of the trees. Um, we got a huge variety. I don't know. This orchard had like 10, 10 or 12 varieties. Yeah, it was crazy. It was, it was amazing. It was fun. Um, so we got a bag of apples. We got um, we got a cute little gift that we were able to give to another play, another friend that we stayed at their house. Um, the pumpkins, like Josh said. Um that might have been it. They had baked goods. They had Oh my coffee, gosh, they had some really yummy caramel apple. What was stuff. it? Oh, and they were voted uh, the best apple cider in the state of Wisconsin mm -hmm. from some fair they went to. Um, and yeah. we were asked by the owner just because, um, so this was another point that you should remember is depending on um, what business you visit, they might open earlier, so you might have to leave earlier. So like wineries kind of open around noon, so you you're welcome to stay a little bit later. But this one, they had a school group coming in the next morning. Um, and this, it was really rainy, yeah. like weeks before. So everything was wet and trying to find a parking was kind of difficult. So we were where the buses would be. Um, mm -hmm. So he did ask us to leave fairly early before the school buses got got there. But that wasn't a problem. I mean, you got to respect the owners. And, yeah. you know, we don't want them to take it away for somebody else because we don't want to listen so and it wasn't bad the school bus he said the school bus would be arriving around nine and honestly we have two toddlers we are up at six six most days so <laughs> we ended up pulling out of there around eight we didn't necessarily intend on being gone at eight but that's just how our morning worked out we pulled out around eight so i mean this this program really is on the honor system mm -hmm. if you can respect the facility they will respect your presence there um, so it, it was great despite having to park up on a hill and whatever. I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was a it was great windy. first experience. Crazy it was windy. windy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On the hill. Yeah. yeah. It was, that was a really good experience. So, yeah. um, that was for the kids. And so then the next couple <laughs> were for we're the for parents. Us. <laughs> <laughs> it was about wine time for, for it, us. It was wine o'clock. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was wine o'clock yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, and so the next one was in Carlock, Illinois, and that one was called uh, Sunset Lake Winery. Also, I think they switched the names to... Previously known as White Oak Vineyards. Okay, so it used to be White Oak Vineyards, and then there was a company in California yep. that trademarked their name, so then they were in the process of switching it to the Sunset Lake Winery, which was very fitting because it was a beautiful sunset was, while yeah. we were drinking our wine. Yeah. Um, and this one, we, it was small. We kind of got there mm -hmm. on like a Wednesday or something. So there's not a lot of people really slow. There. Like one other couple the whole time yeah. over there came through and a nice older couple. They're actually looking to retire. And so, so if you want to buy a winery, he, yeah, there you go. So we were able to sit there and we talked to them and we heard about their life mm -hmm. and we got to tell them about ours. Yeah, they, they also had a dog. Um, so some of the locations are pet friendly. Not all of them are. So if you are traveling with a pet, um, make sure you're paying attention to that. Um, but this location, they had um, what, a German Shepherd, No, right? no. it was a Bernese Mountain Dog. Bernese Mountain Big Dog. Big old dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the second we pulled up, she says every time that dog sees a camper, she wants to help you unhook. Yep. She was, it was she or he? Gosh, I think it was a girl. Yeah, it was a girl. Was it? I yes, was thinking yeah. it was a boy. No, well, anyways, it doesn't matter. It was a dog. <laughs> um, so anyways, the dog was very sweet and walked right over to where we needed to set up. Yep, helped us um, set up and everything. Yeah, told us right where to be. And yeah, it was very cute. 
and very friendly. Ranger loved playing. Mm -hmm. um, they had a grand old time running around the property, and yep. and the owners were awesome. They came out to our camper and and met Ranger, and yeah, yeah, it was it was great. It was very nice, and they had wine that the dog was on. So yeah. their label had their dogs. Mm -hmm. So I mean, they obviously love animals. So that's why she's like, well, I gotta see your dog. <laughs> yeah, and this particular location, we spent our money on. Um, we did two wine tastings. We got um, some, they had some little snacks at the bar. Um, well, bar, I mean, it's a, a tasting room. It's not really a bar. Um, so we got some snacks for the kids so that they could have some snacks while we got to visit with the folks. And then um, we bought a bottle of wine that we are going to gift to one of our family members. Um, so that's yeah. always another way that you can you can spend the money too is is to pick up gifts along the way. Yeah, just interesting wines out there. The ones mm -hmm. that, I mean, we stayed at another winery and there was just wines I've never heard of or you would probably never think of. Yeah. We'll tell you with this next winery that we stayed at. Our third Harvest Host experience. Yeah. Which was? Sleepy Creek Vineyards in Fairmont, Illinois. Yeah, that was a cool one. That was my favorite. This was the a wine. splurge stop. This one was not planned. I had found this vineyard already. Um unrelated to Harvest Host. I had already found this vineyard and it had rave reviews. Um, and so it was kind of like on my radar, but you know, we really didn't need to go to another winery. Um, we weren't sure where we were going to stop and sleep for the night. Um, so Josh stumbled upon this on the Harvest Host and was like, hey, what about this winery? I said, hey, I already found that winery. So we we're like, you know what? It's meant to be. Let's just go check it out and, and we'll see. So this was his favorite. They had some awesome wines. Um, I, I mean, I liked most of them. They were different. Your favorite? My favorite was, it was called Sourpuss, and it did have kind of a, a soury taste. It was a white table wine. Yeah, and the label was of their cat. They had um, two house cats there from the previous owner, so then when they sold it, the new owners, you know, took over, and also the cats came with. Yep, and two vineyard cats. Very nice cats, but they put the label with the cat on it. So at this particular location, they have a um, event facility on site um, for doing parties, weddings, all kinds of things. A beautiful wedding spot. Yeah. Um, so for this particular spot, they had us park in the event parking lot. So we were kind of in the back, tucked away. This is where we were by some trees that we were a little worried about, but we decided we were willing to take the risk and um so we were like n nestled in the back by ourselves and it was great it was we, nice and quiet yeah we were able to walk around the property um this was a, a pretty large vineyard they had mm -hmm. a lot of different grapes and the best part for the kids is they had a row of table grapes they let us go out there and just pick what we wanted yeah they're decorative yeah almost you can eat them too I well like yeah them, you eat them yeah they were okay yeah yeah i liked them the kids <laughs> loved them and it was fun we were able you know the kids don't necessarily understand what a winery is i can tell them that there's grapes growing on trees and they turn the grapes into juice and then yada 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 but um right. to actually let the kids go out in the tree rows and look for grapes themselves and they just had a really fun time you know it became a competition of who could find the most grapes yeah. It was nice to walk through those and drink mm -hmm. a glass of wine. Yeah. So on this one, that's what we spent our money on. Again, we did two tastings. One tasting, two tastings. Two tastings. And yeah. I and I bought That's right. Two my tastings. Wine. Two glasses of wine and a bottle. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, this one was the most unique wine. There was a different mm -hmm. one and it was a Bloody Mary wine. They um, use tomato juice mm -hmm. to make it and yeah, then tomatoes they, and jalapenos yeah and then they ferment it with jalapenos so the wine itself had a somewhat of a tomato jalapeno taste mm -hmm. it was a little bit spicy mm -hmm. and then you mix it with um your bloody tomato uh, actual bloody mary mix and so it was like a wine bloody mary it but it was make, good mm -hmm. and if we had not been using harvest host we would never have seen or nope. heard of anything like that that never. was really really cool yeah yeah, and so. this was the location where we got to visit with one of the locals and um, she was the bartender that night and uh, she was a sweetheart. She was really fun to talk to. 
um, answered all of our questions about the area and the, yeah. the winery and um, patience for yeah. the kids. Yeah, running around messing with the cat. The cat finally was like, "I'm out," <laughs> and we had to let it outside because it was tired of being chased around. <laughs> but this particular location had a large tasting room, and um, since we were the only ones in there, I mean, the kids were able to just run. So yeah. it, it was a great location yeah. for sure. Yeah. Is there anything else? I forgot. So. Um, they also have a website, um, and that's how you can find the locations. Mm -hmm. um, we downloaded, they have an app, and that's been really easy because then you yeah. can actually search where you are and do a you know mile radius, how far and stuff, and um, that's and how we've been doing it. And it has the phone numbers, mm -hmm. it has the address, it has pictures from previous people. So we've been trying to really stick on doing reviews because yep. it has helped us. And then, yeah, there are reviews on there, so you can see what people are saying. Like, you know, it's a great place. This is awesome wine. Um, yeah. So that's been really nice. And you can send it right to your Apple Maps or Google Maps, and uh, it takes you right there. And mm -hmm. we've not had a problem trying to find these locations, too. Tells you if it's pet-friendly, um, gives you a link to their website so you can kind of see what they have for purchase. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how we've decided, like, if we wanted to go to a certain one for a wine tasting or not, that's part of what we're looking at. Right. I... Harvest House has been a great experience. So... We've only done three. We love it. Yes. We'll we will continue. definitely be doing more. For sure. Yeah. So just a reminder, we do have a code for you guys to get 15% off. It's a great referral program. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribing so you can see all of our videos. And stay tuned for next week. We will be in Indiana. Yeah. Don't forget that little tiny red subscribe button. Push it. And the bell. Don't forget. Subscribe to follow our channel. The bell is for notifications for when we post. Mm -hmm. Love you guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Say bye, bye to you. you. Love you. Bye. 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 bye.